Hello, welcome back again to the Geography 300, the Geographical Data Analysis video series for WVU. We, in the previous video, introduced the idea of spatial autocorrelation. Is a place similar, dissimilar, or not related to its neighbors? I said that this time we are going to look at that particular question of who is my neighbor. There are several, there are different ways to answer that question. And the term where this comes in is called the spatial weights matrix. We don't need to, for the purposes of this course, delve into the exact um, reason it is called that. But you will see in software where it asks for the spatial weights matrix or how that is defined. There are three primary approaches to generating those spatial weights. And I have here a region with, that is broken down, so we could take, say, a generic state broken down into counties, for example, or a county into census tracts, whatever. We have it broken down. And we are wanting to for this, say, for that starred area, what are its neighbors? The first approach is to look at boundaries. So the boundaries, does it share a boundary? Pretty straightforward. So I will draw blue links for those neighboring units by contiguity approach. Now this does bring up a question. What do I do about corners? Do corners, just a corner, count as neighbors? We can answer that yes or no. And The terms, borrowing again from chess, a rook contiguity matrix will include corners, or will not include corners. Rook does not have corners because the rook goes up, down, left, right on the chess board. It cannot cross into corners. The queen, on the other hand, can also move diagonally. And so if you include corners, that is a queen contiguity matrix. The other thing is there is a way uh, to keep this kind of sane. I'm not going to draw it here. But an approach that can say second order neighbors, which includes the neighbors of the neighbors. So this would now be included, as well as here, this small one, that small one, here, I've done this as queen, so it would extend to here, or through there anyway. It would then cover almost all of this particular area for a second order contiguity matrix. That can, so it's not very useful here, but if you're looking at, say, all the counties in the U.S., all 3,000 of them and plus, um, you may then decide second order neighbors for something could be useful. So that is the contiguity matrix. Mentioning the US does bring up a particular disadvantage for the um, 
contiguity matrix, which is to say, what do you do with some place like Dukes County, Massachusetts, or Nantucket County, Massachusetts, or Island County, Washington, or any of the counties in Hawaii. All of those are islands. Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, the islands in Puget Sound, Hawaii obviously full of islands. They do not have any neighbors. So we cannot just go off of this. We need to have other ideas. The first other idea is a distance threshold. And when working with areas, what we do is we draw a, basically we draw a circle around this area using the centroid and anything that has its own centroid in that circle this does not. So even though it is by queen contiguity a neighbor by a distance threshold it isn't. But we have a lot of these other smaller ones that even though they are not contiguity neighbors they are within that distance band. The advantage here is being able to have that constant distance and it will work even for islands that do not have official neighbors. But if we look again at the counties of the US, we might have another problem. If you've ever looked at a county map of the US, you may have noticed in certain parts of the West there are very large counties. Some counties in California are larger in square miles than entire states in the east. So if you pick a distance that is large enough to actually give those big counties out west neighbors, once you take that same distance into the east, it's going to say, some counties, Mon County might have 200, 300 different neighbors, including heck, maybe even the entire state of West Virginia, certainly most of the state. That doesn't seem like it should be right. If that's a problem, then we can go with the third approach, third main approach, the nearest neighbor matrix. In the nearest neighbor approach, I would say I might pick five and pick the five closest ones, again, by the central distance. So I might say, okay, this, this, there might be one, two, three, four, five. 
without measuring and not entirely certain, with the five purple ones here, to be the five closest. The main, and this is done for every single unit. The catch here, this one that I'm pointing to, I'll do its neighbors, five nearest in green. Notice they're all in this small area. So there is a caution for the nearest neighbor approach. In so what we're seeing is each of them has strengths and weaknesses. This is not probably not a surprise. Contiguity. If we're two different units, if you're my neighbor, I'm also your neighbor. That is guaranteed. Because we have a shared boundary that has to apply on both sides of that boundary. A distance threshold. If you're my neighbor, I'm guaranteed to be your neighbor. Because that distance doesn't change no matter which direction you're going. It's going to be the same distance and it will meet the threshold in both directions. That is no longer true for the nearest neighbor. Yes, it is flexible enough to give reasonable values if you have wildly differing unit sizes. So the counties out west, the counties here in the east, very different sizes, but we can have reasonable, a kind of a, a flexible distance to say, I'm going to always use the 10 or 15 nearest neighbors. There then is the caveat, just because you are my neighbor, that doesn't guarantee that I am your neighbor. You might have other closer places than I do. So we have these three different approaches, contiguity, distance threshold, nearest neighbor. All three of them have choices to make. Rook or queen contiguity with a large data set. Do you do a second order or even a third order neighbor? Within the distance threshold, you have to pick the distance. You have to pick that bandwidth. With nearest neighbor, you have to choose how many neighbors you're going to use. What it comes down to, and we'll see this in the last of the videos for this topic, there can be many different justifications. There can be reasons to pick different kinds of waste matrices. What it boils down to is you need to be able to justify your choice. You need to be able to say, I picked a queen contiguity because of X. I picked a 100 kilometer distance threshold because of why. You need to be able to say why you made the choice that you did. That is the main takeaway of choosing between these three different approaches. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out and ask whether that is in class, whether that is by email. I will answer your questions. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.